Goeiemorgen, Grot 12, Good Morning, Great 12. Ons gaan vandag aan met ons kort verhaal. So we're continuing with our short story and we're going to follow much the same recipe as we did yesterday. I will go through the pages with you and then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions on the WhatsApp group. So you can follow along with me in your book. We're still using Spielbilder and today we are on page 187 or you can just follow along with the slides as well. Oké, okay. so gister waar ons gestop het, was net mooi toe Robbie Verlen gebel het in die middel van die nacht om vir hom te sê, ons een dode vrou in sy hotelkamer. So that's where we ended off yesterday, just as Robbie called Len to tell him about the dead woman in his hotel room. Oké, okay. and now Len is speaking. He's going to tell us what was wrong with his life. And they're going back into their history, um, the history between them, and we're going to find out when Len met Robbie. Kijk, 15 maanden geleden was ik op die rand van gereuneer wees. Die muziekpromoter by wie bijna niemand vir wie bijna niemand wou ken nie. Na die op een volgende hammersla van die Martin Mouton dwelm skandaal, die financiële fiasco van die Acacia muziekfeest, die elf kunstenaars wat diplomaties professionele verschillen aangevoer het as die rede waarom hulle kontrakte met my beëindig het. So if this is not just what was everything that was wrong in his life. 15 months ago, I was on the edge of being ruined. The music promoter who almost no one wanted to know. After the successive hammer beating, so he describes these things, um, these setbacks as being beaten by a hammer of the Martin Mouton drug scandal, the financial fiasco of the Acacia Music Festival, festival the 11 artists who diplomatically cited professional differences as the reason why they ended contracts with me. So you can see now he was really down in the dumps. And he goes on. I was 47, gesky, amper bankrot. Het vriende gaan soek op die bodem van een whisky glas en net selfbejammering daar gekry. Tot die dinsdag aand to Sibeline bel. Sibeline, eienares van Marula, die keierkroeg in Hatfield, ketting rookende Sibeline, van onpeilbare ouderdom met die postuur, knopte gezichtje en klein bruin blink oogies van een meerkat. Wat volgens legende een aand een donk agressieve tikkies achtste man met de cricketkolf katswink geslaan het. Oké, okay, so everything was really, really bad until one evening. Let's have a look. I was 47, divorced, almost bankrupt, so he had no money, looking for friends at the bottom of a whiskey glass, so he started to drink quite a lot and only finding self-pity there. Until the Tuesday night when Sibeline called. Sibeline, owner of Marula, the party bar in Hatfield. Chain-smoking Sibeline, of unfathomable age. In other words, he has no idea how old she is. And I listen to this description. With the posture, pinched face, and small brown bright eyes of a meerkat. That's not a very nice description and probably not a very attractive woman who, according to legend, knocked out a drunk, aggressive Tikkies number eight with a cricket bat. Okay, so just to make sure that you guys understand this, um, the Tikkies person is somebody who studies at Pretoria's University. We talk about Tikkies. And the number eight is the position he plays in rugby. So she knocked out a, an aggressive student rugby player one evening. And usually the number eight is quite a big guy, so it's impressive that she could knock him out. Jy beter kom luister, this is now Sibeline talking, is al wat sy oor die telefoon beveel het. Ek het getal hem, veilig in die arms van my one whips minares. Eindelijk gerei, omdat dit Sibeline was. Ek het haar geskuld, geld onder meer. En daar was net een sprankie miskierigheid, want dins so by die Marula is oop mikrofoon, wanneer die hoopvol is thuis staan om op die verhoogie te klim. In die cynische en remoerige studenten gehoor hulle meestal een vir een met snijdende sarcasme en vindingrijke beledigings weer nou net een enkele liekie daarvan afjaag. Oké, okay, so this is now the conversation between Sibeline and Len. You better come listen on the phone. Is, is all she ordered over the phone? I lingered. So he's not too eager to go. Safe in the arms of my mistress of despair. So he does not literally have a mistress here. He's just, he's feeling a lot of despair and he, he doesn't really want to pick himself up. Finally drove. So he finally left because it was Sibeline. I owed her money amongst things. And there was just a bit of curiosity. 
because Tuesdays were open mic at Marula when the hopefuls would stand in line to climb on the tiny stage and the cynical and noisy student audience would mostly one by one with sharp sarcasm and inventive insults after a single song chase them off it. So they're chasing the hopeful singers off the tiny stage um, after just one song. Die tijdsberekening was a voorwoorde. A paar tree van die kroegse deur af het ek die gitaar gehoor, verstom en behendig, maar uniek, spookachtig rauw en alweregs, met echoes van Barry en Hendrix en Clapton. Okay. The timing was a premonition, and you will find out for what a little bit later. A few steps from the barge door, I heard the guitar. Surprisingly adept, so in other words, surprisingly good, but unique, ghostly raw and unconventional, with echoes of Berry and Hendrix and Clapton. So um, you guys can go and Google those names. Obviously, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, really, really good guitar players. So you can go and have a look at them. Okay, so I put a picture here for you just to set the mood. I get in gestap. Binnen was dit stampvol, die atmosfeer gewaaid. 400 pare oor vast genal op die verwoog. Robbie het daar gestaan, lang en skraal en onmoendlik jong, geboe, asof die instrument om sy nek een juk was. Sy hare krillend oor sy skouwers af, Die gezicht of val, bleek, engelachtig, ondanks die donker melkbaard stoppels. Daar was iets kwestbaar en breekbaar aan hom. Die soor delikaatheid wat vrouwen onweerstaanbaar vind. Okay, so let's have a look at the translation. I walked in quickly. Inside it was packed. The atmosphere consecrate. It's almost, guys, um, like when you're in church, ne, and nobody wants to say anything or do anything, you're on your best behavior. Everybody is focused on this stage. It's almost like they're in church and they just want to see what's going on on stage. 400 pairs of eyes pinned on the stage. Robbie stood there. And now we get our first physical description of Robbie. Tall and skinny and impossibly young. The impossibly young, obviously, guys, because he is so skilled. Bowed over as if the instrument around his neck were a yoke. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, when we use oxen to draw a plow or a cart or anything, that thing that goes around their shoulders and that's attached to the plow or the cart or whatever is called a yoke and it's quite heavy. Okay, so he's bowed over as if though he's, he has that heavy thing around his neck. His hair curling over his shoulders, the face oval, pale, angelic in spite of the dark, soft stubble. Now note here, guys, that milk bar stopples. This refers to the fact that he's very young. When um, a young guy starts getting a beard, we talk about a milk bar in Afrikaans. So it's that first stubble. He's still very, very young. There was something vulnerable and breakable about him. The sort of delicateness that women find irresistible. Now, all the ladies in class can tell me if it's irresistible or not being delicate, but apparently in this story it is. Let's go on. En toe begin hy sing, Die stem as vandanig was onindrukwekkend, even nasal, ongepoleer. Maar dit was die som totaal van die belade sy heilende kitaar, die swevende melodie en die eenvoudige, briljante lirike, wat vir my en die gehoor betover en ingetrek het, soos motte na die licht, en in sy musicale web vastgevang het. Sy beeldspraak was niet in vars en evocatief. Woordschilderijen van verlaten landschappen in onmetelijke horizonnen, van verlangen in zwerfdochten, in eeuwige ontwijkende liefde. Die soort worden ons allemaal in die klein ere van die ogen smag. Ek het bewust geraak van Sibeline wat langs my kom staan het. Sy het een klein en ek het mos vir jou gesê glimlach. En toe met haar kop bedaie na die tafel langs ons, waar zes vrouwen gesit het, Elkeen met die, die selfde uitdrukking van volkome verrukking. And then he started to sing. Okay, so now he's describing his voice. And this is kind of unexpected. The voice itself was unimpressive. A little nasal. So nasal, it sounded like this. Unpolished. But it was the sum total of the ballad's howling guitar, the soaring melody, and the simple, brilliant lyrics. 
which bewitched and drew me and the audience in, like moths to the light, and caught us in his musical web, like a spider in our eyes. His metaphors were new and fresh and evocative, word paintings of desolate landscapes and unmeasurable horizons of longing and wondering and ever evasive love, the kind which we all long for in the small hours of the morning. So guys, early in the morning while it's still dark and you're completely alone. I became aware of Sibeline who came to stand next to me. She had a small and I told you so smile. And then she pointed with her head to the table next to us where six women sat, each with the same expression of complete rapture. So imagine now guys, six women sitting at the table, staring at this young guy on stage, almost looking like they're drooling. Okay. Nadat die gehoor om eindelijk laat gaan het meer as een uur later, het Sibeline vir my aan hom voorgesel in haar kantoor. Dis Len. Bietje vir hinne weer, maar hy is dolk wat jy nodig het. Oor koffie het ek om uitgevra. Hy was twintig jaar oud, van Pumalanga. Sy ma was een beesboer na by Amersvoort. Van sy pa het hy niks gesê nie. Hy het naaskool op die plaas gewerk, tot sy ma vir hom twee weke gelede gesê, loop sing, dat jy kan rust kry. Hy het homself geleer speel, so uit die boekie uit, en dier te luister van dat hy el was. Skouwer ophalend, asof dit sy volkome niks seggende story was, het hy een manier aan hom gehad, een sekere afwezigheid, asof hy een heel al verweider was van hierdie wereld. Again, we're getting a bit of a character description here of Robbie. So after the audience finally let him go, more than an hour later, the Berlin introduced me to him in her office. So this is Len, a little worse for wear, but maybe he's what you need. I asked him about himself over coffee. He was 20 years old, from Mpumalanga. His mother was a cattle farmer near Amersfoort. He didn't say anything about his father. He worked on the farm after school until his mother told him two weeks ago, go sing, so that you can calm down. I had himself geleer spiel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just saw now here yeah, that I typed it in Afrikaans for you guys. He taught himself how to play out of a booklet and by listening since he was 11, raising his shoulders as if that was his whole meaningless story. He had this way about him, a certain absence, as if he was one universe removed from this world. Let's continue. Ek sal later leer dat dit sy natuurlijke staat is, dus in hom en die werkelijkheid was daar muziek en lyriek wat dier hom gebruis het, Sy gitaar en nota boek altyd by die rand, die enigste twee rekwisite op sy levensverhoog. Ek het my best gedoen om die smeking uit my stem te hou en om gevra of hy dit sy oorweeg dat ek om verteenwoordig. Asseblief oom, noem my leng. Plechtige knik van sy kop. Sy beline door die aand saam met my uitgestap. By my moeder het sy gesê, leng, jy gaan recht doen. Ek gaan, tot die eiberag. Sy het door die klein oogies voorskiewend op my gericht. Jy beloof my, ek beloof. Min mense kry tweede kans, ek weet. Ok, so this is now the conversation that takes place between Sibeline and Len while she walked him out to his car. I would later learn that that was his natural state, Robbie's natural state, ok? He seems absent as if he's a little, little bit removed from reality. Between him and reality, there was music and lyrics which flowed through him. His guitar and notebook always at hand. The only two requirements on his stage of life. I did my best to keep the begging out of my voice and asked him if he would consider letting me represent him. Please, Wim, call me Len. Solemn nod of his head. Sibeline walked out with me that evening. At the car, she said, Len, you'll do right. I will, maybe too eager. She trained those small eyes on me in warning. You promise me. I promise. Few people get second chances. I know. Die versoeking was groot om vir Robbie de Weer dadelijk te probeer loslaat op die glanskonsert kringloop en om om atelier toe te sleep vir een vinnige CD en vinnige geld. Vader weet ek het dit nodig gehad, maar Sibeline was reg en ek wil graag geloo ek kon leer uit my foute. So now he says the temptation was great to immediately let Robbie de Weer loose on the glamour concert circuit. So these are all the big concerts now. And to drag him to a studio for a quick CD, 
and quick money. Lord knows I needed it. Remember now, Len is broke at this stage. But Sabeline was right. And I wanted to believe that I could learn from my mistakes. Ek het ons contract gevat en welwillendheid onthalde, so met hom uitgerei na sy maat toe. Marie de Vee, verweerde aantrekkelijkheid, langs soos haar sien, een swaagsame vrou met een sachte mond en harde oor, wat al thees goed gesien het, die eenvoudige opstel het die hartseer atmosfeer van storige onkeerbare verval gehad. Sy het die dokument aandachtig gelees, maar die enigste reaksie was een gedempte, dus goed so, dankie. Okay, so for the sake of goodwill, I took our contract and drove out with him to his mother, Marie de Vier. Worn attractiveness, as tall as his son, a quiet woman with a soft mouth and hard eyes that have seen hard times. The simple farmhouse had a sad atmosphere of slow, unstoppable decay. She read the document attentively. Her only reaction was a solemn, it's good, thank you. Sorry for the typo, say guys. Okay, ek het omstaardig gaan blootgestel in die harde leerschool van die stede en a paar van die platteland sy kleiner muziek verwoe, so dat hy sy optrede kon skaaf en verfijn. En omdat ek van die beginne vermoed het, Robbie sy magiese magnetisme kom van die verhoog persoene af, wanneer hulle sien en hoor, wanneer hulle sy persoonlijkheid en voorkomst en sy muziek saam inkryk. So I slowly exposed him to the hard learning school of the cities and the few countryside smaller music stages so that he could brush up and refine his act. And because I suspected from the start that Robbie's magical magnetism came from the stage persona, when they see and hear, when they take in his personality and appearance and music together. I could for him on Facebook and Twitter a teenwoordigheid geskep onderbeklemtoon en met een tikkie mystiek. Ek het geraap en geskraap, net net gelijk gebreek en versichtig vir hom my orkest by mekaar gesit. Jong, talentvolle muzikante wat sy ondersteun sonder om die kolig te steel. I created a presence for him on Facebook and Twitter, understated and with a bit of mystery. I scrounged and scraped, only just breaking even and carefully put together a band for him, young, talented musicians who would support without stealing the spotlight. We're almost at the end here. Sy gehoor het gaande weg gegroei. Sy eerste serie, twee maande gelede bekend gesel. Die recensies was uitstekend. In twee onderhoude het journaliste verwees na sy nederige aardsheid, sy onskuld, en die verstommende volwassenheid en inzig van sy lirike verkope was toenemend bevredigend. As you can see now, guys, um, they haven't known each other very long. They've only known each other for 15 months, and his first CD was only released two months ago. His audience grew rapidly. His first CD released two months ago. The reviews were excellent. In two interviews, journalists referred to his humble earthiness, his innocence, and the astounding maturity and insight of his lyrics. Sales were increasingly satisfactory. Three weeks gelede het hy met a landsweie tour begin. Pretoria, Johannesburg, Appington, Bloemfontein, Kimberley, Belleville met a grand finale by die KKNK op uitvoering. Die concerte was amper uitverkoop, ek het die eerste twee in Gauteng bygewoon en weer kennis geneem van die groot aantal vrouwen in die gehoor, meestal laat twintigs en vroe dertigs. Hulle onbeskaamde en uitbindige genot van hom en sy muziek, meestal heel voor tegen die verhoog. Goeie marksegment, goeie materiaal vir die camera en die beplande YouTube video. So three weeks ago he started with a countrywide tour, Pretoria, Johannesburg, Uppington, Bloemfontein, Kimberley, Belleville, with the grand finale at the KKNK in Uitsweren, that's the big Afrikaans arts festival. The concerts were nearly sold out. I attended the first two in Gauteng and again took notice of the great amount of women in the audience, mostly late 20s and early 30s. There, oh, sorry, so that should be T-H-E-I-R, their unabashed and exuberant enjoyment of him and his music, mostly right in front, up against the stage. Good market segment, good material for the camera and the planned YouTube video. Ek het vanavond gesit en die concert inkomste tegen die aansienlijke uitgaves getabuleer en vir die eerste keer gedink ek sien lig. Robbie, my laaste uitweg, die hoop wat nie gaan beskaam nie. En nou dit, 
een like, en sy kamer, een potentiële doodsklok, en meer as een sin van die woord. Tonight, I sat in table to concert income against the substantial expenses, and for the first time thought I saw light. In other words, for the first time he's hopeful. Robbie was my last way out, the hope that will not disappoint. And now there's a body in his room, a potential death knell in more than one sense of the word. So death knell because somebody died and also because it might spell the end for Len's professional career as well. I come so many soon by the hotel on. I klop on the door. I make a lot of fear. I like slag. The long hair near my car, the oor rooi. So I a versnit on verschrikkelijke verlichting in full slow angst. I omhels me. Len, thank you, Len. I arrive at the hotel with the sun. I knock on the door. He opens immediately, bewildered. He looks bad. The long hair messy, the eyes red. His expression a blend of extreme relief and total angst. He embraces me. Len, thank you, Len. I cry him dadelijk in the oomlik intense jammer. I feel met een skuldig. I get tot dit verwe slaklik in myself gedink. Dit moes vir hierdie sachte, sensitieve siel a ondraaglike trauma gewees het. In the moment, I feel intensely sorry for him. At once, I feel guilty. Up until now, I mainly thought about myself. This must have been an unbearable trauma for his soft, sensitive soul. Okay, guys, that's why I'm going to end it for today. If I can find the pause button here.